in the PTC knowledge base, there is a suggested technique for modeling a chain assembly like a bike chain. And every once in a while, I revisit an old personal project where I want to simulate the tank treads and Christie suspension of an M1A1 tank because I used to be on those tanks literally over three decades ago. But anyhow, let me show you how this technique works. It's interesting. It uses some methods I ne wouldn't necessarily think of using or would use, but hey, it's something that you can learn from. So anyhow, when you download the files for this technique, there are two different part files that are located in there. Let's open up link segment one. So here is the part and it has a couple of datum points inside of it. Let me measure the distance between the two. Analysis, measure distance, and let me grab point zero and PNT one. And they have a distance of half an inch between them. And if you take a look at this part, here you can see that it has two basically two posts in here, two pins inside of it. Let's take a look at the other model that comes in the suggested techniques download file. So this one has two bigger pins, but with a hole down the middle. And so the pins from the first link segment will go through these different uh, holes in link segment two, and they have the same distance between them. But anyhow, the first step that you are going to do in the exercise is you will create a brand new assembly. So I will go to file new assembly. And for the name of it, I will call this the bike chain. And I'm not going to use my default template because my default template is in millimeters and this one should be in inches. Let me grab my inch template. And here I am, let's turn on our datum plane visibility. So the first thing that you are going to do is you are going to create a sketch for the path of the bike chain. So I will select this datum plane and let's hit the sketch button. Let me go to my sketch view and I will turn off my datum plane display. And so it is just going to be essentially a racetrack and I'm going to create it manually rather than using one of the shapes that are available in the palette. So let's go create that and then create this one over here and I'm making them the same diameter. And right now the scale is really off. Actually, let me change this one. When I change this to a value of five, the other dimension scales appropriately. That was a nice little addition added a couple versions ago in Creole. And so for sketching a line between them, I will use the line tangent, tangent from here to here, and then from here to here. And then let's use our friend squiggle trim to get rid of the extra segments. And so now we have our loop and then we're going to change this dimension here to a specific value, a value of 1.59155. And this is a specific value so that the entire perimeter of this will be a value of 20. Rather than setting this to an exact value like they have you do in the suggested technique, well, I probably would have used something different like a perimeter dimension or maybe even BMX to have it come out to an exact length or perimeter of 20. But anyhow, now that we have created that shape, I will hit the check mark to get out of sketch mode. And then you can verify the length of this. You can go to analysis, measure, and then length. And rather than picking a segment, I'm gonna tap the right mouse button to get the entire sketch. And we can see that the length is exactly a value of 20 based on that specific radius of the arcs in the sketch. So now that we have that, we will close. And then we're gonna create some datum points so we'll go to the datum point command and this will open up the datum point dialog box and we're going to locate them on the curve and not just a segment of the curve, but we want to grab the whole entire curve. So I'm going to tap with the right mouse button until the entire curve chain highlights and then left click and it's going to locate this by default 
using the length ratio method. And that is what we want to use. We're going to create a point first using a length ratio of zero. The reason that we're not locating it right on the end there is that later on we're going to use this length ratio in order to pattern the points and then assemble those different links. So that's good for the first point in this datum point feature. Then we're going to create a, another point. And once again, we will query to the entire curve chain and locate it on there. You're going to change this length ratio to a value of 0 0.025. And that is essentially 1 40th along the length of this chain. So these two points are going to be used for assembling one of those link segments. So now that we have those two points, let's click the OK button. And with the points still selected, I can hold down the right mouse button and go to the pattern command. And by default, it's going to go to a dimension pattern. We're going to select this dimension and we're going to use a length ratio of 0 0.05. And you'll notice that this 0 0.05 is twice the value of the 0 0.025 that was used for the second point. And this is deliberate. So we'll hit the Enter key. And now we're going to hold down the Control key, and we're going to select the other dimension. We're going to use the same value, 0 0.05, and hit the Enter key. And so there you can see a preview over there. And now we're going to enter in the number of members. And so, again, this offset is for 1 40th of the length of the curve, but we have two different parts that we're going to assemble along here. So we need to get 20 of them along the length of the entire curve. And trust me, the math works out. I'll hit the 20 here. You can see a preview of where the points will end up. Let's hit the check mark. And now we have a total of 40 points that are thrown in here. APNT 0 through APNT 39. That's what we have. So now that we have the points, we are going to assemble the first link. Let's hit the assemble button. I'll grab link segment one. Let me move it and drag it closer to where I want to assemble it, just so that you can see how it goes in here. Let me just move it closer once more. I don't have to do this. Oops, I'm trying to get the dragger. Okay. So now what we are going to do is we are going to assemble PNT zero to this point. Let me rotate it around just so that we get point zero to a point zero assembly point zero and PNT one to assembly point one. So anyhow, to make it easier to select things, I'm going to use my selection filter to change to datum point and select this point and that point. By default, it's giving me distance, but I'm going to choose coincident. And then for the next constraint, I will select, once again, let me cheat and go to the selection filter and change to datum point, point one, and this point. And so by assembling point to point, we got a coincident constraint and an oriented constraint. We're going to leave it checked for allow assumptions. Normally, this would end up having a rotational degree of freedom, but the allow assumptions will take that out. So that's good. Let's hit the check mark in order to locate that. And so then we can select that part and then select pattern from the mini toolbar. And by default, it's going to give us a reference pattern. We can hit the check mark. And so now we've got link segment one distributed over the length of the curve. So that is good. And to make things easier for the next step, I'm going to hide those parts that we just assembled and hide the initial set of points. Now we're essentially just going to repeat that, uh, the two steps that we did here. But we're going to use slightly different values for the second set of datum points. So let's go to the datum point command. And this time I'm going to tap right on the sketch in order to get the entire curve chain. And for this value, we're going to use 0 0.025 because that's going to be the first location point for link segment two. Let's create a, another point. We're going to query to the curve chain. And this time we're going to use a value of 0 0.05. 
and hit the enter key. Let's click the OK button. With the point still selected, I can click on the pattern command. Let me move this over. And so the dimensions that we're going to pattern are going to be the first relative, or excuse me, was it the uh, length ratio value? And once again, we're going to use 0.05 and hit the enter key. Let's hold down the control key and select the other one. And we'll also use a value of 0.05. Let's hit the check mark. Oops, forgot to change the number of points. Let me edit to definition and change the number of members to 20 like we did before and hit the check mark. So there we have all those points. Now let's bring in the link segment two. So we'll hit the assemble button. Let's grab link segment two and let's bring this up closer to where we want to assemble it. I could also just display it in its own separate window and let me rotate it around just so that point zero is closer to where I'm going to assemble it here. So speaking of which, let me choose this assembly point and then get this point. Let's change that to coincident and then let's do a new constraint and I will choose this assembly point and oh, there. Didn't have to use the selection filter this time. Uh, so there we have the first link. Let's hit the check mark and let's select that segment and then pattern it. And it'll do a reference pattern. Let's hit the check mark. And so now we can hide the uh, set of datum points. And let me turn off my datum point display right now. You see all the different points from link segment two. Let's display our first pattern. And so there you have a way of modeling in a design assembly, a bike chain. And so there's specific value of the radius of the curve that we used in order to get these equally spaced apart. Now, personally, this isn't exactly what I wanted because I wanted a chain or essentially a set of tank treads that would actually move around on a path. But hey, this is one technique, so at least you can convey the design to someone else.